All right, peace and abundance, everybody. Welcome back. Market review. Thursday, March 24th. You know, welcome back. If this is your first time joining us. You know, we go over news, headlines, technical, fundamentals, economics, and everything in between. I'm your host, MJ the Mastermind. Welcome. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Nothing, you know, spoken about here is financial advice. It's just our opinions on the market. All right, so make sure you do your own due diligence. All right. All right. We had an amazing class last night in TMG, you know, uh, on the psychology of money, you know, uh, taught by Crystal and Opal, um, you know, so if you're in TMG, make sure you catch that recording. If you're not, you know, you might want to join and catch all this value inside, inside of our community. All right. So let's jump into our affirmation of the day. So today's affirmation is I consistently attract the right circumstances at the right time. I consistently attract the right circumstances at the right time. So like I always say, put that energy out, say it, write it down and, um, you know, let it manifest. All right. So let's jump into, you know, some of these, uh, some of these headlines. Right? It's funny. It's funny that, you know, on the green days, the attendance is a lot lower than on the red days. <laughs> People be needing that therapy on the red days. I see, but it's all good. We, we here regardless. So let's jump into these headlines and this news. All right, so the Dow trades 300 points higher as Biden um, touts NATO response to Russia and Ukraine war. And uh, also we had some Fed speakers today. All right, so US stocks pushed higher Thursday afternoon as world leaders met to respond to Russia's invasion of Ukraine and investors monitored remarks by Federal Reserve officials. Technology and communication stocks had some of the stronger gains Thursday with chipmaker NVIDIA up 9%. The major indexes still were mixed uh, for the week, though, after recovering to levels seen before the start of the war in Ukraine, despite a jump in bond yields. On Wednesday, the Dow fell 449 points, or 1.3%, while the S&P 500 declined 1.2%, and the NASDAQ composite dropped 1.3%. So what's driving markets? U.S. stocks climbed to session highs Thursday afternoon, uh, trade as President Joe Biden wrapped up a series of gatherings with allies and world leaders in Brussels a month after Russian leader Vladimir Putin invaded Ukraine. The Biden administration rolled out more sanctions against Russia, with the White House saying the U.S. now has sanctioned more than 600 Russian targets. Biden, in a news conference in Brussels, said the new sanctions will cripple Putin's economy while promising more military aid and $1 billion in humanitarian assistance for Ukraine. Right. Second. All right, until we see a cessation of hostile uh, hostilities between Russia and Ukraine, it is prudent for investors to raise cash and reduce exposure to stocks. Right. So, you know, this was said by Richard uh, Saperstein, chief investment officer at Treasury Partners, and emailed comments. So it was a little bit bearish, right? You know, um, you know, basically saying it's best for investors to raise cash and reduce exposure to stocks. While the stock market is attempting to recover from its correction, markets are fundamentally riskier and more uncertain than before Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Right? Investors also heard Thursday from several Fed officials on inflation and the central banking's likely response. Minneapolis Fed President Neil Kashkari said he sees seven 25 basis point interest rate hikes as likely this year, but warned there's a danger of overdoing it. Hmm. And we've heard, you know, uh, you know, Jerome and Mr. Bullard you know, uh, allude to, you know, possible 50 point hike in May and June. Right. Um, J 
Chicago Fed President Charles Evans pointed to the same pace of hikes for 2022 as likely, with three more next year, which would bring the Fed funds rate to a range of 2.75 to 3%. Federal Reserve Governor Christopher Wallace told a housing conference he was watching the red hot market to help gauge the appropriate monetary policy response. Fed Chairman Jerome Powell earlier this week left the door open to rate increases larger than the usual 25 basis point increment. This very hawkish talk has not derailed the market rallying, which started about a week ago, said Jimmy Chang, Chief Investment Officer at Rockefeller Global Family Office. All right. um, it has been a surprise that equities have held up so well. That's true. I'm, I'm a little bit surprised myself. Uh, in the face of a more hawkish Fed and rapidly rising bond yields, Chang said, adding that the more resilient equities end up being, the more emboldened the Fed likely will be to pursue a more aggressive path to tighter financial conditions. Um, Chang also said he thinks there is not much additional upside in U.S. stocks at current multiples but expects trade to remain volatile until there's more clarity from the next round of corporate earnings. Other central banks also have geared up to tighten financial conditions. Mexican president on Thursday, the Mexican president on Thursday said monetary policymakers voted to raise a key interest rate by half a percentage point to 6.5%. US economic data showed first time Jobless benefit claims fell 28,000 to 187,000 last week, the lowest since 1969. U.S. durable goods orders fell 2.2% in February, coming in below forecast. The S&P Global U.S. Services Flash Purchasing Manager Index, PMI, for March rose to 58.9 from 56.5 a month earlier, while the manufacturing flash PMI rose to 58.5 from 57.3. A reading of more than 50 indicates expanding activity. In Europe, um, the Russia index rose more than 4% after Moscow exchange resumed trading after nearly a month with a shortened four hour session in 33 out of 50 stocks listed on the benchmark. However, foreign shareholders are unable to sell shares, a restriction Russia imposed to counter Western sanctions against its financial system and the weakening ruble. U.S. crude oil prices finished 2.3% lower Thursday at $112.34 a barrel after no new oil sanctions against Russia emerged from the gathering of world leaders. While the U.S. and the U.K. are boycotting Russia oil, other nations are still buying Russian commodities, notably Europe, for its natural gas needs. All right, so let's move to uh, some of the top global news of the day. Uh, Fed's Evans, uh, Federal Reserve Bank of uh, Chicago president, said he agrees with the central bank's collective view that monetary policy will need to move to a restrictive stance to get high levels of inflation under control. U.S. share benchmarks edged higher, putting Wall Street indexes on course to recoup some of Wednesday's losses while oil prices slipped. And we're kind of seeing that inverse correlation with you know, oil and, and stocks. Ukraine strikes Russian Navy as war enters second month. Um, Kyiv said it struck Russian occupied port facilities in the Azov Sea city of Berdyansk. These, yeah, these names are hard, man. Setting off a large fire and hitting a Russian warship as NATO pledged additional help for Ukraine. Right. Mortgage rates hit fresh three-year highs. Home buyers and owners are facing a rapid increase that threatens to cool down the red hot housing market. Europe's economy slows as Ukraine war sends costs soaring. The Russian invasion disrupted supply chains and boosted prices of raw materials and energy, while the lifting of pandemic restrictions eased the blow and US business activity picked up, surveys showed. 
Um, we talked about jobless claims. Um, U.S. business investment falls for the first time in a year. Does that mean a slowing economy? Orders at U.S. factories for long-lasting goods sank 2.2% in February, and business investment fell for the first time in a year. Hmm. Suggesting high inflation and ongoing supply shortages were restraining an otherwise strong economic recovery. Russian stock market rallies after being closed for a month. Yield curve. Uh, yield curve almost flashes recession. Maybe, but who knows when. Uh, whisper it quietly, but maybe the yield curve isn't quite as useful as many think as a recession alert. China's stock market weathers heavy foreign outflows. The outflow this month via the Stock Connect trading link is on pace to be the second largest monthly drawdown since the program began in 2014. It reflects a reassessment of geopolitical risk following the financial isolation of Russia. All right, so some company news. Southwest to launch new ticket type to boost revenue. The move reflects airlines continuing efforts in recent years to carve their offerings into even narrower niches, embracing an a la carte pricing model to get customers to spend more. Um, Instacart will add ultra fast delivery as it works to bolster its value proposition to customers and its own growth. FDA rejects Eli Lilly's China-developed cancer drug. The agency asks Lilly and its China-based partner to conduct another trial of the immunotherapy in multiple regions. Elon Musk's SpaceX boosts prices for internet service and uh, launches a new rocket. The space company points to inflationary pressures as the reason for its price increases. We've been seeing this, you know, with multiple companies raising prices, even Tesla raising prices of their cars. Um, and, you know, we're seeing the effects of inflation all around. Uh, in major news, Uber will list all New York City taxis on its app. And, you know, the, the stock had, you know, a nice move up on that news. All right. The alliance could ease Uber's driver shortage and temper high fares while directing more business to cab drivers whose livelihoods were affected by the emergence of car sharing apps and the pandemic. I think that's a, that's a great move by Uber. Great move. Instead of competing, you know, collaborate. Collaboration over competition. And Alibaba's Russia venture puts Chinese e-commerce giant in awkward spot. Russia has been a rare bright spot for Alibaba's international e-commerce business. Now it is just another headache. Uh, Wall Street wages on gym chains return to form. Fitness club operators are back in favor among investors for the same reason Peloton is on the outs. Americans are tired of working out at home. Credit Suisse warns a $500 million hit from billionaires lawsuit. The bank has spent years fending off claims from Bitzina. Um, uh, I'm not even gonna try this name, a Singapore investor who sued it in uh, Bermuda and Singapore for breach of trust, alleging he lost $800 million on forged trades made by his private banker. Uh, jeans maker Contour Brands wants employees to focus on generating cash. Contour Brands Inc., which owns denim brands, including Lee and Wrangler, has reduced its net debt by more than a third over the past three years, in part by turning transactions into cash faster. Right. Um, um, Danish container shipping giant AP Moller Mesk is electrifying its North American businesses through a five-year agreement with Swedish freight technology company um, and ride that includes the use of 300 electric heavy duty trucks. All right. All right, so let's dive into, you know, that does it for some of the top company news. Um, let's dive into, you know, what Biden had to say about Russia today. Right. 
All right, Biden says U.S. would respond to Russia if Putin uses chemical or biological weapons. President Joe Biden said NATO will respond in kind if Russia uses weapons of mass destruction in Ukraine. We will respond if he uses it, Biden said, referring to Russia, President Vladimir Putin. The nature of the response depends on the nature of the use. Biden also said he would support an effort to expel Russia from the G20 group of economies. Right. Um, so the president declined to say whether the United States has evidence that China has helped Russia evade sanctions or sold American high tech equipment to Russia in violation of export bans. Um, I think that China understands that its eco economic futures much more closely tied. I'm sorry. I think that China understands that its economic futures much more closely tied to the West than it is to Russia, said Biden. And, I, and so I am hopeful that he does not get engaged, uh, referring to Chinese president. Um, it will be a blatant violation of international law and with far reaching consequences, Stoltenberg said, adding that the use of such weapons could impact nearby NATO member countries. Again, we've been talking about this risk of you know, NATO countries getting involved um, and America getting involved. Um, so again, we're not seeing the situation really get any better right now. And it does, it seems like Biden, uh, not Biden, but Putin is really determined, you know, to continue this war on Ukraine until he gets what he wants. So if we do see, you know, nuclear weapons used, um, I think there's a high, you know, I think Biden just confirmed it um, by him saying that they would respond. Um, and if U.S. responds, we know that, you know, the rest of NATO would respond. So that could put us on, you know, a World War III watch. Okay. So it will be, I mean, we're kind of already on World War III watch, but, you know, that would kind of confirm, you know, uh, you know, the rest of these countries getting involved. Um, the NATO alliance will, soon, will be soon providing Ukraine with equipment to protect against chemical, biological, and radiological, as well as nuclear weapons, says Stoltenberg, which is the NATO Secretary General. He declined to elaborate on what kind of specific support the lines would provide in order to protect operational security. Russia has a long track record of accusing others of what they are either already doing or about to do. And that is the kind of projection that we've seen in the last couple of weeks. And it's very scary. Biden said in an interview Tuesday. Uh, first to support Ukraine uh, first, to support Ukraine with military and humanitarian assistance. Second, was to impose the most significant um, economic sanctions regime ever in order to cripple Putin's economy and punish him for his actions. Third, was to fortify the eastern flank of our NATO allies, who were obviously very, very concerned and somewhat worried what would happen. Right. Um, so yeah, you know, we gotta keep our close eye on this, right? Because we know that, you know, this could heavily affect the market. You know, if we were to see US get involved or, you know, some NATO countries get involved, um, you know, that could cause a huge effect to the market. As we saw yesterday, usually there's a, a, a drawdown um, on the markets when, you know, you know, certain things like this occur. Right. We saw a drawdown when they first invaded, but, you know, things would only get worse if the U.S. and NATO were to get involved. So we can expect that to have more of an impact on the market. All right. Um, uh, so NVIDIA in talks to use Intel as a foundry to manufacture chips. Um, so as inconceivable as it may sound, your next NVIDIA GPU could be manufactured by Intel. NVIDIA CEO Jensen Huang held a question and answer session with the press yesterday, and the topic quickly turned to Intel's foundry services. Right? 
that will see Intel making chips for other companies as part of its IDM 2.0 uh, initiative. So for those that don't know what IDM, Integrated Device Manufacturing uh, type company is a company that designs and manufactures chips. Right, so they have a foundry and they also have a designing component. All right, so there's actually um, three types of semiconductor companies. You know, IDM, which designs and manufactures, a foundry, which only manufactures, and then, you know, it's just the companies that design, right? Like Apple, Apple's just a strictly a designer, or AMD, strictly a designer, right? Um, and remember, we talked about this uh, about a month or two ago about Intel competing with TSM, right? And, you know, we talked about that being their best move instead of competing with AMDs and the NVIDIAs. And it seems like, you know, they're actually, you know, taking those steps. So smart move by Intel. All right. So we saw NVIDIA shares up as they continue their uh, GTC conference. Um, and, you know, a lot of other semiconductor stocks are up like Intel, AMD, you know, on some of the news. And, you know, it's looking like they're going to be dominating the AI space, which we already had an idea that they would be. But as more developments come out from the GTC conference, it looks like, you know, um, they're primed for growth. Uh, so analysts like what they heard. Um, so it says NVIDIA led the rally on Thursday, climbing about 9%. Earlier this week, NVIDIA said at its investor day that the company's roadmap include new server chips with an emphasis on artificial intelligence, as well as a plan to build the world's fastest AI supercomputer. Now, NVIDIA's um, GPUs are already used in the, you know, the fastest computers in the world. But for them to, you know, you know, embark on this journey of, you know, building the the world's fastest AI supercomputer with just their components, that's a, you know, that'll be a huge um, breakthrough. Because I think now the fastest computer in the world uses AMD, Nvidia, um, both both company components. Right? Uh, fundamentally, we continue to believe NVIDIA is uniquely suited to benefit from the growth of AI in hardware and potentially software. Right. Um, the chip rally was aided by a Labor Department report that showed initial jobless claims last week dropped to its lowest since 1969. Investors snapped up shares of companies poised to benefit from a U.S. economic recovery. AMD rose almost 5%, while Broadcom gained close to 4%, and Qualcomm rose 3%. Right? So if we look at, let's go to Finviz. So you can see here, you know, technology strong bounce, strong rally by technology as, we, as we've been seeing over the last couple of days. You know, the worst performing sector was energy. Um, but again, technology with a strong move here. Is it a trap? You have to be seen, we'll see. I think we might end this week with a doji candle. Um, so we might, you know, from last week to this week, it might be a rally base. And I think next week, will be, you know, very, you know, very telling um, as far as who's, who's really in control. Right? If we get a rally-based rally or if we get that rally-based drop. Uh, BlackRock's Larry Fink, who oversees $10 trillion in assets, says Russia-Ukraine war is ending globalization. Um, I believe this has exacerbated the polarization and extremist behavior we are seeing across society today. Um, uh, BlackRock has suspended the purchase of any Russian security in its active or index portfolios. Um, Larry Fink said it has left many communities and people feeling isolated and looking inward. 
I believe this has exacerbated the polarization and extremist behavior we are seeing across society today. He also said, over the past few weeks, I've spoken to countless stakeholders, including our clients and employees, who are all looking to understand what could be done to prevent capital from being deployed to Russia. I remain a long-term believer in the benefits of globalization and the power of global capital, capital markets. Access to global capital enables companies to fund growth, countries to increase economic development, and more people to experience financial well-being. The money we manage belongs to our clients, and to serve them, we work to understand how changes around the world will impact their investment outcomes. Right. All right. So you know that's a rundown of some of the top news and headlines for the day. Right. Um, if I missed anything, feel free to add on. But let's 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 take it to the charts. Let's take it to the charts. So strong move by the bulls today. We bring up the chart. I will say I like the um I like what I heard from the female Fed. Um, I heard it on Bloomberg this morning, and she basically said, if we need to add 20.25, we'll add 0.25. If we need to add 0.5, we'll add 0.5. You know, it all just depends on what the data. So it kind of reflecting what um, Powell been saying. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and away from what Powell, um, the other Bullock been trying to, put that fear in everybody's head, you know, with that point five. So, you know, I think that's why the, the market kind of did what it did too a little bit this morning, early morning, when they heard that news coming from a Fed. Right, right. Yeah, no, good point. Good point, uh, Kia. All right, let's look at, let's look at the charts. So again, we have demand. We have demand here that we've been bouncing out of. Boom. Now we have this level here that I've been, you know, talking about. You know, old resistance that turned into support that turned back into resistance. We're now trading inside of that zone. So this could be an area where sellers step back in. Let's throw the fib back on. So um, looks like we're coming up to test the 61.8 fib. And we also have, we're also, we just tested that daily supply today. So let me draw this key level and get rid of the 50 and the 100. So if we draw this area of supply, so let's just do it this way. You can see we basically tested, see I'll do the exact price level so we can get an exact reading. So the price level is 45.19. Okay. So let me draw the supply zone. So we have this daily supply, which lines up with our 61.8 FIB, which lines up with an old resistance turn to support turn resistance level. So there's a lot of things going on in this area. Um, our 61.8 FIB is at 45.38. Um, our high so far this week is 45.17.5. So nice response. Um, from you know buyers today, getting us back above the hunt the, the two hundred day, right? Um, but we're still going to have to test the sixty one eight fit. 
right? Which usually is a key area where sellers can step back in, right? Um, so we just have to pay close attention to this zone here that we're now trading inside and this daily supply at 45.19. Now, originally today, I thought we were poised for a drop, um, you know, but buyers were strong. Buyers were really strong. I originally had a bear flag. I originally had a, a bear flag here. Let me draw it. You know, it was a bear flag, you know, but, you know, buyers, you know, were just strong. They just were strong, you know, today. So if you look, we had like this nice pattern here, you know, this morning. Had this nice bear flag. And then, you know, we started to sell off. You can see this 15 minute candle here. You know, we, we broke below the 200 day, then we rejected it. But then buyers just came in and was like, nah, we're not with it. And then uh, continue to take us back up. So the bear flag didn't play out. Uh, you know, so I, I was wrong about that this morning. So like I said, it, it doesn't, you know, the chart patterns aren't a hundred percent strategy. It doesn't work a hundred percent of the time, right? But we had the cross, the bullish cross, you know, um, earlier this day. Uh, this was like 2 a.m. Got the bullish cross, right? So you can see here we squeezed. Sorry, we squeezed here around 10 a.m. You see the EMA squeeze, and then we had the huge jump from like 10:30 on, and then we broke out, came back, tested the 9 EMA, broke out. I thought we were gonna double top here when we got this Doji inside of supply, uh, but then buyers just bounced off the nine. Again, so buyers were really strong today. Every every sign of sellers got taken out. Every sign of sellers got taken out today. But we are on watch for a double top. We are on watch for a double top here, depending on how we trade in the overnight session. If sellers step in here, this could be our first top yesterday, um, right? Which we do have a four hour supply here. Um, and then, you know, depending on how we trade or sellers step in here, this could be a double top, but buyers have been strong. Right? But we haven't quite tested that daily supply at 45.19 yet. But we are in that zone. We are in that key zone of, you know, supply. So just see how we trade tonight going into the pre-market tomorrow. If, if, you know, if sellers step in here. Somebody said they wanted to see the last couple minutes of the trading day. Yeah, so at 3.59, we did get a nice spike going into the close. Nice spike. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if sellers step in here and we double top. I wouldn't be surprised because like the analyst said, you know, Things are more, the markets are more riskier and more certain, more uncertain now than they were, you know, a month ago, right? Um, so some things to keep in mind, but watch this level going into tomorrow, it's 45.19 and see if, you know, we get a double top here, you know, um, you know, in the aftermarket. Right? Uh, let's look at the VIX. So it looks like the VIX might pull back to the demand that I was talking about and test that 200 day. Uh, technically, this cup and handle is still valid, right? Um, but it is a very steep handle, very steep handle. Usually, we don't see the handle this deep. But if we do break below 20, cup of handle will be invalid. But I think it's possible we bounce out of this demand. So this is this is interesting. This is very interesting because the VIX is coming down to test demand and the 200 day, while the S and P is coming up to test supply in the 61.85. 
right? So it's possible that we see um, sellers step in and take us down as we see the VIX bounce, right? Or, or the VIX can crash right through this demand in the 200 day and we see the ES just continue to rally. But like, what is the catalyst for this rally, right? I mean, we, we confirmed the 25 basis point hike, but does that necessarily mean like all the risks are gone? I don't think so, uh, but I could be wrong. Uh, so just something to think about. Um, let's look at crude oil. So crude oil bouncing off the 61A fib. We talked about that yesterday as a possibility. And it looks like that's what that's what played out. Um, I don't think this run is over. I think we might we might get a pullback to the 38.2, kind of create like a cup and handle, or pull back to the nine EMA, or you know, between the nine and the 20, and then set us back up. But I don't see, I don't see, you know, oil just you know, crashing from here. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense. It just doesn't make sense. Uh, and we also have a daily demand here uh, from yesterday's action. So you can see we pull back inside that daily demand today, buyer stepped in. So we could be setting up for, you know, back-to-back rally-based rallies. We had a rally-based rally earlier this week, and then today was another base, and tomorrow could be another rally and as we go up to test 120 again. Um, yeah, yeah, Kian. I mean, stocks were oversold. Let's go to SPX real quick and look at the RSI. Um, what is what was the low? Yeah, we had a low of the uh, low of twenty four in January, and then when we hit that low, closer to forty one hundred. Uh, RSI was trading around 31. Yeah, so, you know, stocks were oversold. Um, but, you know, there's still, there's still an immense amount of risk and uncertainty in the market. So again, key area here, Resistance turning into support, turning into resistance. It even looks more cleaner on the SPX than the ES chart. So if you go here, boom. See here. So this is a very key level here. It's 45, uh, you know, 4520 to, um, you know, like 4550. Let's look at NVIDIA. So again, NVIDIA with a very nice bounce off old, 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 um, old resistance. So if you look, so if you look here, you'll see we got resistance. Resistance came down, bounced very cleanly off this uh, 208, this 208 level. Bull flag, right? You see, we had this flag pattern here, trading inside of this channel for from November to Feb, uh, to March. We were trading inside of this channel, and then last week finally broke out bullish engulfing candle, and then this week a continuation. Um, looks like we're going to clear the supply um, if we if we're able to hold above two eighty five. Uh, the supply here will be invalidated. Um, a nice move from NVIDIA, you know, off this, you know, GTC conference. Let's look at Tesla. Let's look at Tesla. Uh, Tesla, same thing, very similar pattern. Uh, we had that three candle last week outside bar, bullish and golfing, and then a continuation from this week. We are trading inside of supply. We've been bouncing off that 61.8 FIB. Buyers have been having a hard time. You know, uh, you know, you can see we're kind of basing a supply right now. 
uh, had that perfect bounce off the 61A fib yesterday. And then today, and then today you can see we kind of just traded sideways. So I, we could possibly be setting up for a rally base uh, drop from a rejection of the supply zone in the 61A fib. Let's look at AMD. AMD finally breaking out uh, from this downtrend. You can see here, uh, we almost got a perfect break and retest. So you can see here we broke, we came down, almost tested to the penny, we tested the nine and the 20, and then almost tested the trend line, and then we're breaking back out today. But again, you know, perfect, same thing on AMD resistance, you know, turning into support, perfect bounce from that $99 level. Some of us is gonna, you know, some of us, some of us are gonna look back, you know, a year from now and wish, you know, wish they got caught AMD at this $99 level. Because you think about it, you know, up to his uh, previous highs, up to his all time highs is 60% increase, right? 60% gain from, you know, this 99, not this $99 level to all time highs. And we know, we know it's going to get back to all time highs. So 60% gain potentially in the stock over the next year. Let's look at the 10 year. 10 year uh, continuing to move higher. Had the cup and handle play out, cup and handle, and then the breakout um, since mid last year. So that's continuing to trend up. Let's look at Apple. Apple's been on a nice run. Again, break, break of the downtrend. Nice squeeze on the EMA on the weekly and then a breakout. I think this is Apple's fifth day in a row up. Oh, more than that, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days in a row. Uh, Apple's been up. But we're gonna have to test this 175 supply. Um, if we do an all-time high, We do an all-time high to the most recent low. You can see yesterday we rejected the 61.8 fib, but today, you know, buyers pushed us above. But it all depends on how we close the week. It's possible that sellers can push us back below, you know, tomorrow. Any questions, comments, concerns? Peace and abundance. <clears throat> Good afternoon, everyone. <clears throat> Thank you for sharing your time with us today. <clears throat> so <clears throat> let me show you how the trap is being set up. Um, <clears throat> like MJ talked about, you go to SPX chart real quick, please. SPX? Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, go on the weekly time frame. Second. It's the weekly, all right. And then uh, February 1st, 2021. Yeah, what, the January 31st week? No, the fe February 1st, 2021. Oh, 2021. Okay. Yeah, yeah, 2021. Uh, yeah, right there, you can just zoom in. Zoom in. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's right there. So <clears throat> what do you see there, right? It was in the uptrend. Price ran up two weeks, then slid for three weeks. Sellers thought, sellers thought you know, we got them. It's over. The uptrend is over. We got them. That's a wrap. It's a, nope, it didn't happen like that. So fast forward back to, you know, our current. Wow, doesn't that look similar? You know, Boz is like, yo, we about to run this. It's over. Like, what? 
pandemic downtrend. We got them. All right, I'm going to give y'all some levels you need, you need to be looking out for. All right? 45.88, but even before that, um, we got 45.76.61 to 45.73.52. Uh, that's the one hour supply. Uh, we also got 45.49.7, uh, 61.85. So, like, please, please, please. We just did 60 points in a day. We do 60 more points, we hit that 4588. That's the supply that got smacked out back in a uh, week of February, week of January the 31st, and the week of February the 7th. <clears throat> Again, I could be wrong, but just be cautious. That's all I say. Be cautious. Yeah. Always, you know, always want to stay cautious. And uh, if we look at SPX, we actually haven't broken um, this week's high yet on SPX. I think we might have on ES. Yeah, it looks like we did on ES, but on SPX, um, not yet. Um, so I'm, you know, I'm watching for a double top here. You know, it could not play out, and that's fine. Uh, but you know, the facts are, you know, the market is even more uncertain than it was a month ago, and even more riskier than it was a month ago. And we are trading in supply. Now, you know, if the market says they don't care about that, they don't care about the risk, then that's just what it is, right? And you got to play it, play it that way. But, you know, you definitely have to be aware and cautious. Right? Definitely have to be aware and cautious. Uh, you know, the fact that we are in a, a strong area of supply. Uh, and I think that, I think we do get to the 61.8 fib. I think we probably, I think we do get to that 61.8 fib. But even if we don't, you know, you know, this daily supply and this double top could play out. Right. Um, this daily cross on the daily EMA was, was bullish, like I said, a couple of days ago. Um, but, you know, you just want to be aware. And I'm seeing, you know, the VIX chart and the SPX chart are showing signs of a potential you know, move to the downside. If we get the VIX to bounce off the 200 day in demand and we get SPX to bounce out of supply and the 61A fit, right? Now remember, remember if we go back uh, to, uh, you know, early February, remember we bounced off this 61A fit, we double topped right at the 61A fib, and then we went off to make new lows. Right. Um, now we're, we're, we're in sort of a similar situation, um, but we didn't quite test the 61A fib, but we're looking to possibly double top. Uh, but what we could see is that we continue to move higher um, tomorrow, and then we test that 61A fib, and then next week we can see sellers step in. Right. I think there's a higher probability that we, re we, we reject this 61.8 fib, then we just blast through it. But that's just my personal opinion. And we're testing the upper Bollinger Band on the daily, right? So for, in my opinion, there's a higher probability that we reject and move down from the 61.8 fib. But, you know, this is all probability. So it's, we could very well just blast through it, right? But, you know, tomorrow should be telling um, in that sense. Let, let them blast through. Let them blast through. <laughs> like uh, off to a plane. Let them blast through. Yeah, let them blast through. We got Bitcoin running. Everything running. It's like, oh, spring about to come. Oh, it's here actually now. Gonna pop our collars. 
Yeah, Bitcoin effect is breaking out as this symmetrical triangle here, you know, that we talked about earlier this week. Um, so don't be surprised. And it, it, it broke above, well, we didn't quite clear supply yet, um, but, you know, looks like it's trending up, breaking out of this triangle pattern. Uh, probably seeing the same thing on Ethereum. Yep. Breaking out of this uh, symmetrical triangle, um, but we're going to have to blast through this 3,200 supply. Yeah, any questions, comments, concerns? We will not be on tomorrow. So if you have any questions now, ask now or you have to wait till Monday unless you're in TMG. I just, I just want to ask this: What's, what's the catalyst? You know, to continue to continue to rise. Yeah, this this action doesn't make any sense to me. But you know, I I'm just human. I'm just you know, I'm not no guru. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not an institutional investor. So I could very well be hundred percent wrong. So take what I say with a grain of salt. I am not a guru. The market is based on futures, right? Pretty much. You said based on future prediction, future predictions, right? Right. So if COVID numbers are down, so then now they're predicting that it looks like we're going to have an open summer to where everyone is going to, you know, enjoy themselves, travel more, open up the economy more. So it could be looking at that form of an indication in that aspect. And the other one, like I mentioned, some of the stocks was oversold already. So, you know, some of the buying action is like, yo, we're not gonna get these prices like this anymore. You, you know, we might not see these prices. So that ran up the market a little bit. Hmm. Yeah. But I will say we are still in rotation in because usually the first half of the year is energy and financials. And then the second half is uh, tech, tech and, um, you know, a little bit of uh, med uh, like med medical. Right. Yeah. And it's an election year, too. So we got to, you know, wear it. Right. Back. Can't forget about that either. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, like, yeah, we're seeing, you know, COVID numbers down, initial jobless claims are, you know, lowest level since 1969. Um, but we're seeing growth predictions, you know, like we're seeing lowered growth predictions at the same time, right? And we're still having supply chain issues, which we thought were gonna be solved by what, third, second, third quarter? It doesn't look like that's going to be the case. So I think a lot of things are conflicting right now. Um, and I think only time will tell, you know, where, where the market goes. But this rally here, you know, what are we only, what are we off the high, 6% maybe? Then if you look also, look at seasonality. March is usually a down month. And you have a little rally in April and then a pullback in May. So it could be leading up to that because we have what? One more week left in March. So tomorrow might be the last day of a run. And then next week we get a pullback or the pullback could start from tomorrow, continuing on to next week. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. I, I, I would say this, Nvidia, I mean, AMD went down 30% from last, Years close, right? To around hundred dollars, ninety nine dollars, right? It's now approaching still negative fifteen percent from last year's close. It really didn't do much. And then the seasonality, is seasonality factor in uh interest rate hikes. Well right. interest rate hikes was factored in at the beginning of the year. 
That's why we had that 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 drop. Not nine though. Huh? Not nine points. No, that five that point five I think was factored in, and then we only got point two five. So if the you know once the next Fed meeting is in May, and we usually have a pullback in May. So once they add that other, whether it's a half a point or a quarter of a point, then, you know, tell, tell signs. But if he only adds 0.25, but if the economy is doing good and he only, and he do add the, the um, he feels as though it could handle the 0.5, then the market going to react on a downtrend just, just so it could calculate the numbers and then eventually go on a bull run for the second half of the year. Right. On lower earnings and lower guidance and lower margins? No. How is lower how is low how is lower margins and guidance when inflation is, is ramping up their numbers? So look so AMD's in, in immune uh, supply chain issues or every other company? No, they're not. But what if they had what if they had enough supply to hold them off until they do get supply? What if this was factored in in 2020 with AMD as far as having supply? If if that was the case, Tesla wouldn't have raised prices. Tesla raising prices for inflation. From inflation. It wasn't it's not just supply. The, the inflation is caused by the supply chain issues. Inflation is also caused by high gas also prices. Also, commodities prices, too. If we're getting commodities, it costs right. to, yeah, to get all the Commodities go materials. up based on supply and demand. It's not just based off of supply and demand, though. So, for instance, right, AMD, how do you know they don't have a stockpile? Because we had read um, last year that Target had an overwhelming number of stockpile to be able to provide everything for the holiday season. And we don't even know how much left they have. So how do you know AMD didn't stockpile as well? I don't know they didn't stockpile, but I do know the chips are now in Samsung phones, Tesla vehicles. You know, two things you really can't get your, hand, get your hands on. And then the upgrade cycle, like are people gonna be upgrading as, as, as quick as they were in 2020 and 2021? And now in 2022, highly the tell signs, The telltale signs will be in earnings. And I'm sure forecast and earnings, all companies are going to say they're going to add in the supply issue or whatever going forward, right? And that might pull the market down just because they mentioned supply issues going forward. But no. if they maintain, if, they're, if their numbers are good because of inflation, Right, then that give them a little leeway going forward because now you you're saying okay, their numbers is good, and they're saying and you know just like with all companies, they'll stand back a little bit, and then when that following quarter do come and the supply do get here, you know to offset what they was talking about, now they numbers look real good. It, okay, if if they was gonna do that. They won't be doing all these buybacks to cook the books on the EPS numbers to take shares off the market. Yo, you have to stop now, Ike. No, 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 why not make your investors happy to stay in the company? Also, too, do you think some of these companies are sandbagging their earnings? Apple did. their future guidance? A lot of them do it. They're not going to come out and give you the... If, if, if they come out and give you the, the exact number of what they expect, and then they don't hit that number, then what? But if they cut back a little bit and then they blow past that number now, Oh, it's a great company. What if they sandbag and they miss? 
then they going to drop, and right. it's going to be a long way to the bottom. It's all what ifs. It all it, right now is all what 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 ifs. We won't know until the facts get there, until they do earn this, until they Q, they ten Q report comes out or whatever. Right. right. So we right all this all all right now is all speculation. One Just thing that's not but speculation. We can go by what we seeing. But you know, there's a, th- a couple of things that aren't speculation, and that's inflation is super high, and the Fed is looking at 50 basis point hikes back to back, and there's risk of NATO getting involved in this war. Right now, and we're seeing GDP predictions lowered. There, there, there are risks because what if that's what put if Putin see that he can't win this fight. Why not go all out and start an all out uh, war, world war, to affect the economy that he's a part of, that he's not a part of anymore? Putin does strike me as a very prideful man. So I, I could see him going down swinging. Yes. Listen, my, my mm-hmm. Mr. War, my Mr. War, these interest rates is about to come for everybody. If you ain't got cash in the bank, gonna be some rough days ahead yeah 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 i mean interest rates housing interest rates are at five point something percent i think in some cases i think it just broke over five percent so if anybody looking to buy some real estate next quarter might be the quarter the price is going to come down mm-hmm. yeah and, and i mean Oh my God! Is is nobody going to talk about Apple stepping on everybody's toes with the M1? Like, we just going to forget about that? <laughs> I said it before. AMD and Nvidia might disappear in the next ten years. No, not at all. Why? Why? Not why would that happen? Nvidia's not going to know. Apple. Let me tell you something. Apple needs Samsung. Apple needs Samsung for innovation. Without Samsung, they, Apple won't won't have any innovation. Apple need Google. Apple need other Microsoft, so they could see how they could improve their product. Hmm. Yeah, so competition. You so you don't think Apple search is coming? Apple no. Search. Apple can't. They tried compete. it already. They can't compete with Google. They tried it already. Yeah, so Keaton, did, I see you. What, what did Tim? What did Tim Cook do? He said, "Okay, then you 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 could pay me to put Google on my on on my platform." And Google paid Apple every every year billions of dollars to have Google on their platform. So so who who was Siri querying to when you asked Siri a question? They must be he, they must be getting the information from Google. <laughs> Well, don't assume. Don't assume. Hey, I'm not assuming. And, 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 and guess what? Voice search is growing exponentially. They're not the only one in that competition, though. Okay. And, and, and guess what? That M1 chip is going to get stronger and stronger and stronger. It's coming to stop on all your, everybody. So, yeah, but so they you up. still yeah. have NVIDIA out there. You still got AMD. You still got Qualcomm. You still have other companies. They, Apple they, is not they, the they only. The Apple have, have their own. Apple. Hold on. Apple have their own ecosystem. Yes. Right? And it's growing. But but Android is another ecosystem. We're not talking about that. We're talking about. And what AMD do you have? Do you have Apple or Android? <laughs> I got Android. <laughs> Point proven. No, 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 no. We're not talking about Google. We're talking about AMD and NVIDIA. We're about to okay. get exposed by Apple. AMD, AMD and NVIDIA. Go ahead, kid. AMD and NVIDIA have their, their own platforms. You, you have companies that's using their chips. HP is using AMD chips. Um, Dell is use, using AMD chips. You have other major companies out there. Not everybody run into Apple. Apple is what, an ecosystem that you want to be a part of. What, what's your desktop key in? My laptop is is a Mac MacBook. Oh, what's, okay. 
Are, are, are you are you about to somehow touch AMD or NVIDIA anytime soon? Nope. You locked in. And that's going to continue to expand exponentially. Like, this new chip is powerful enough to rival the 3080 NVIDIA GPU. That's okay, so you said that um, we might have supply issue, right? So what if Apple has supply issue? Who are they going to run to? Intel. Oh, oh, they're going to run back to Intel that, that kick. Well, in, in, Intel do is on their knees begging them to, to, to come okay. back. Okay, all right. You, there we go. Like, like, but that's what, 2025? Oh. How long it takes for them to build up, build up a, uh, I, I, production? Again, again. 2025. So we're, we, we're a, in 2022 right now. So three years it. ahead, by, by the time that you're building up produ production, I'm thinking ahead of you. So you got to think six years ahead while, while I'm thinking three years ahead for you to catch up to me. All I'm going to say is this. If more consumers is using mobile devices because they become more powerful, right, as their everyday device, where does AMD and NVIDIA step into that space? Because if, you, if, you're, in the, if you're in the Apple space, you are locked into Apple. You're not touching any other tech company. Okay, so we, you're not even mentioning another major company that's out there that's rebuilding their brand right now, that's using AMD and NVIDIA. I'm listening. Do I, do you, do I need to say it? Or you could yes, say it? Yes, please, please. Facebook. Please. Meta. I'm sorry, one, one of the hottest, hottest selling hardware devices is powered by Qualcomm, not AMD or NVIDIA. Please. Go check again. Go check again. If, if go check the again. Oculus, the Ted on Oculus. It's not just Oculus. Oculus. They're Oculus. using Oculus. AMD and Nvidia in their metaverse. They are. They already signed a contract with them. Yeah, they're using their servers. Using their chips for their servers. Uh, but I don't see Nvidia going anywhere because Nvidia's business isn't just strictly based on chips. You got and, and from Nvidia. from the last what I heard also. AMD um just surpassed Intel in market cap. We're not talking about them. We're not talking about we're talking about the space of chips. But and you're talking thinking, about different industries now in though. I can, you're specifically talking about one thing that Apple does and does very well. But when you look at the global industry as a whole, when there's medical devices that need chips, you're talking about software or um not software, but security systems, and you're talking about automated systems. All those still need chips. So, so hold Apple up. has I, this, I, it has I, a great a great a great hand in what they're doing. You know what I mean with the mobile devices, the phone, the iPad. They have that. The watch. The watch. The, the watch. The watch. The watch that just okay, got regulated. The the watch that just got regulated. So 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 the, the thought of them going into healthcare going to be pulled back a little bit. They gotta go. They gotta go sell their lobbyists. To go to work now to clear up that situation with the with the watch i i, I just i'm I, again pay attention to the, the apple trees growing everywhere at hospitals are using ipads people wear apple watches for health they are spreading like johnny appleseed hospitals gonna start using t dot um devices Aki. <laughs> and I'm I, and I'm sure Apple is only using their M1 chip in their devices. They're not sending their M1 chips in other people's devices. So they're going to have to either use AMD, Nvidia, Qualcomm, other chipsets. So Apple is not the only. Is enough. It is enough to 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 have everybody eating and have a full plate. Because if it wasn't, so, then AMD wouldn't be beating out Intel right now. So soon enough, it won't be. Because it's going to be one device that does everything. Example, when the computer becomes your contact lenses and everything is virtual, oh. I'm sorry, how does AMD and NVIDIA get into that space? Because they have the advantage already, Taki. NVIDIA invented the GPU. So they already have... In, in, Intel invented the CPU. Where are they at? That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. But we all know that management is what drives a company, right? 
And we know that and Intel hasn't had the best management. So when it comes to NVIDIA though, NVIDIA um, has already been working on parallel computing, right? So if anybody has the advantage in that space that you're referring to, it's NVIDIA, not Apple. Because this is something that they've been working on for the last couple of decades. So do you really think Apple is going to rest on their laurels after they demolished Intel and now they add GPU power with a CPU? Like, the, the beast is not stopping. It's coming for everybody. Yeah, that's fine. But what, what kind of servers? All right, so when we talk about data centers, people aren't using Apple servers, right? They're not using Apple chips. That's a huge market, the data center market. So NVIDIA and AMD are still going to be eating off that data center market. And we know cloud computing and edge computing is only going to continue to increase, right? So in my opinion, NVIDIA and AMD aren't going nowhere, even just based off the cloud, right? Because companies like, you know, the OEMs like HP, like Dell that are manufacturing servers aren't going to be using Apple's chips, right? Because Apple is going to keep that to themselves unless they decide to outsource or unless they decide to, you know, you know, um, let these OEMs use them. But I don't think so because that's just not in Apple's, it's not, that's just not what they do. Okay. Well, Apple hasn't even taken out Samsung yet uh, to be trying to take out NVIDIA and AMD. That, that's true. That's true. But let's just, let's just, let's picture it, y'all. <clears throat> so when the AR VR device that comes out from Apple what do you think the adoption rate is going to be? 20%, 30%? We'll just say 10, right? That's 55 million people, right? And now they're going to be using that device, not the PlayStation 5, not the Xbox, not the NVIDIA GPU, not NVIDIA GeForce Now cloud computing. They're not going to be worried about all the 4090 about to come out. Oh, they're not going to be worried about all the 5090 about to come out. Because by that time, everything is going to be on the cloud. And whatever you in, you know, that you sign up with or hardware device you step in with, you're going to be using their device to enter the cloud space. And you forgot about Microsoft? I'm not worrying about them. I, I, again, this is about AMD and NVIDIA survival. They're not going anywhere. Okay. All right. NVIDIA is not going anywhere. Okay. Especially when we got artificial intelligence as one of the you know top growth markets, edge computing, right? You just seen NVIDIA sign a few deals with car companies for the NVIDIA Drive platform, you know, to you know oh, manage man. autonomous driving infrastructure. Come on, man. I, I, Aki, I, I, I got a I, question I, for you right hold now. Up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. No, no, hold no, up, no, no, you hold, hold up. up. No, 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 no. no. I, I got I got to talk. I got to talk about the NVIDIA Drive, right? <laughs> so when the Apple Car comes out, how many people do you think gonna buy that? Okay. How do we know what the cost of the Apple car is going to be? What if it's not affordable to the average consumer? This is brand loyalty. And Apple's brand is loyal. All right, so paying $1,000 for a phone is different than paying $100,000 for a car. You could be brand loyal, but you still got a budget. I'm sorry, you can't get a Model X right now. Or a Plaid. Yeah, but that's based on supply chain. That's not based off price. Like, why is the Model 3 the best-selling vehicle in the world? Because it's $30,000, right? So if Apple comes out, it's, it's about the pricing power. People could be brand loyal, but if, if the, the iCar is, you know, 100 grand, people might look at, all right, I can, I can have an iPhone and a Tesla. <laughs> like, I'll save that 70K. You know, Aki, I, I got I got something for you. Right, What's going to happen when houses go fully automated? When these smart homes are already because are, there's already smart homes out here, but even smarter homes, how many chips do you think is going to take to power that house? And how many? And how, do you think Nvidia is going to have their hand in that? Absolutely. AMD going to have their hand in that? There's over 300 chips in a car, in, in a Tesla. There's over 300 chips. So how much do you think is going to be chips in a house? Mm. He hit you, he hit you with he hit you with the left hook on that one, Aki. 
again, <laughs> I, I could be wrong. And, and Matt, you're right, right? Nice amount of chips, you know. But um, <clears throat> so when the Apple device comes out that's incorporated with Siri, that's incorporated with your phone, your watch, your car, yeah, your contact lenses, your AR, VR. I mean, do you want it? I mean, I can keep going. Yeah. They're going to be boxing everybody out. Like, pay attention. They're not just stopping and slowing down. Also, also to Aki's point, they have, like, even though these iPhones is $1,000, MacBooks, $3,000, people still buying them, right? And people still buying them, too, because of their... They're financing. You buy something through Apple, through their financing is zero percent down. You no, you don't pay no interest, no nothing. You're just paying what the price is, hopefully. But then you look at the situation, and it's like, okay, you finance everything now. Everything will be financed and service based, and then yes. all you got to do at the end of the month is bills. Yes. Why, why do you think the services revenue keep going up? Yeah. Now I did see an article. And you know who finances his deals? Goldman Sachs. <laughs> did y'all hear that Apple is working on a subscription service for the iPhone? Again, it's scary how how much they could touch and, and expose everybody. I'm telling y'all, yeah. if a, if a free device come codes, out... But people still have choices. Yeah. We just saw yesterday, they came out with an article that they buying uh, some kind of... What was it? A financial... Yeah, financial firm. They, yeah, they giving... Now they're giving Square uh, you know, run for their money also. And all the other fintech companies. And they already... did all choices. The whole you guys thing. are making very fair points, but when is enough enough? When it comes it's, to monopoly, when they done, when is it enough? No, when they done, I like control when everything. You, when you, you have control every part of your life. Yeah, yeah when you're the top dog, you're not stopping. Until... Y'all talking? There's still choices. There's still choices. He and you about to build a, 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 a PC anytime soon? No. Okay, so guess what? You will never touch AMD and Nvidia. Why not? I got a, I got a, a Note phone. I got a Samsung phone. Did you upgrade to the latest one? Because if you didn't, you ain't touch AMD. AMD is in this phone. Oh, you got the, what's that, the new S22? No, the Note 20 Ultra. Okay, all right. Hey, Aki, can I jump in real quick? Of course. So I'm, I'm, I'm on Aki's side with the Apple, right? Um, I, I get it with all the chips. Totally cool. But what? who's the company that's going to get first to putting your license, driver's license on your phone or your Apple Watch, right? Uh, Apple, that's a whole different level. Now you're talking about governments accepting your phone as verification to get into different countries. They're moving into passports, right? Uh, you know, uh, Global Express to get you in the country, out the country. Samsung's not doing that. Microsoft. Uh, check that. again. Check again. The sense of not doing that. Samsung's I wallet. Think that's where Apple, not... I think that's where Apple no, got that's the idea not true. from. Samsung already did it. They, Thank they, you. They ha they have it incorporated with Google. No, no, no. So you're telling me the United States government approved it? Because it, just because you have the software doesn't mean you're doing it. Well, right? it's the same thing with Tesla. Just because Tesla wants to do whatever that they can do, do they wait on the government? No, they do what they have to do, and then the government will follow afterwards with the regulations, right? They're not going to wait for the government to tell them what to do. They're going to innovate and then they're going to turn around and then they're going to pay the fees later. Well, I agree with that. I agree. But who gets the, the, the regulations first, right? Apple's ahead of the game on getting the regulations. And it's going to be the Apple product that gets the regulation. It's going to be per device. So that's where the advantage comes from. Yes, most, plenty of cars out there have full self-driving. But if Tesla gets it first through legally, then they win, right? And then the other cars will follow, but then they get the dominant market share. If Apple gets the wallet first with the licenses and the passports, then they win over Samsung. Samsung might have the software already. I'll, I'll double verify. I don't really look into Samsung. <clears throat> but if Apple gets it first, then that's where the W comes from. 
But no, let me ask you this. Everybody doesn't let me, have an Apple phone. So how? how but let me ask why, you this why, too. Why I'm, it I'm be with you. All the other phones. Right, but that pushes you to want the iPhone because it becomes but, more no, convenient. Says, you're not getting the iPhone though, just because you got passport ID. All right, not- I can multitask better on an Android than an Apple phone, okay. but I choose Apple because of the usability of Apple phones and an Android okay. phone. And, that, and that's and that's so, all fine, I'm, but that's fine. That's all so fine, and that's fine, right? But anybody that anybody on this call right now that has a Samsung device, I'm pretty sure they have a they have an Apple device. And I can also get probably guarantee also that everybody that has an Apple device does not have a Samsung device. So y'all saying Apple finna get hit with some antitrust when they try to uh, take over all these markets soon? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> mm-hmm. Absolutely. No, no, yep. no. They can't regulate you know it now. What's you know why that's not gonna happen? Because they pay too much money to the lobbyists. They provide too many jobs to the United States government and they're homegrown. And then we getting deglobalization. It's happening right now. So that old Samsung this, Samsung that, how, whoop, you out of here. Nah. Like, it's going to be home turf. That's a good turf. point, Aki. That's a good home point. Turf. It's not turf. a good point a good because point. Apple, uh, why, so why is Samsung building on your own t- home turf then? Samsung is. Why is Samsung building on your home turf if, it, if it's all like that? Because they already passed regulations with the U.S. Key, and I'm telling you, it's home turf first. U.S. companies will get U.S. love before everybody. I'm telling you, you've seen it happening with Ford and GM, you know, with Biden. He just and mad, you know, Tesla is, you know, created the whole EV space. But I'm a also seen that Apple got regulated and they have to open up their app stores to everybody without charging them. And that sounds good, but it sounds like uh, Samsung gonna have NVIDIA and AMD uh, chips inside their phones now that Apple gonna take over all the chips? It's a possibility. I mean, but guess what? When your phone don't need it to be as powerful anymore because the network is gonna be so powerful that you got have cloud VR where your connection is, you know, 10 gigabits a second or two gigabits a second. You don't need a powerful chip on there. Everything is in the cloud space. I'm watching. I'm watching everything on my Samsung TV. I don't got an Apple TV. That's wonderful. Yeah, right. And That's it's connected. And, and it's connected your, to all my devices. But what's your MacBook? What's your laptop? It's a MacBook, right? Yeah, my laptop you, is a MacBook. But that's, what, but that's what I'm saying. You just don't. You can't just have Samsung products. I have choices. That's what I'm saying. But so why? Not, so why you have, I don't so have why? to be loyal. Because so why do you have a when, MacBook? But that's the difference. Because when Everybody Microsoft that has Apple is loyal. Because when Microsoft was getting hacked, I never been hacked with with my Apple. So I stayed with Apple on my Mac mm. on on, on computer wise, right? I got my Sam I got my Samsung notebook. All phones since day one has been Samsung. Never switched. Never wanted to. Never had a reason to. Because I never bought the bottom of the line Samsung. I always bought the top of the line Samsung. Money back, Keaton. That's why. <laughs> nah, it's just choices. It, it's enough. The plate is big enough to have Apple could eat, Samsung could eat, AMD, Nvidia. Okay, Apple saying that they're not going to use. They want all the money to themselves, so they're not going to pay anybody else. They could have their sources from within. That's fine, but you still have to choose Apple products. I'm not switching. And there's a lot of people out there that's not switching. Yeah. Just wait. Ah, always a pleasure, man. Thank you, everyone. For the battle. <laughs> it was lovely. Another classic episode. Interesting debate. You know, this is what it's about. All right. Still sharp and still. All right. Yep, and like Rory said, one can't one company can't meet the demand for the world. We're not talking about the world. We're talking about the United States. Yeah, and the as, United as, States. And as we see, they keep jumping into more and more spaces. Like they not stopping. But they keep. It's not like they coming out with every. They need Samsung to copy up on what Samsung do. Yeah, there's uh, nothing I'm, that Apple breach. Other than having their own ecosystem, there's nothing that Apple have had that Samsung hasn't done already. 
I'm sorry, you come again? I'm sorry, what, what, what? What well, OS do Samsung got? And, and you, Keen, you prove your point. Samsung did it first and people are still Apple. So that, that right there is loyalty. They're not going nowhere. Well, what I'm saying is if I could get it from Samsung, I'm, I'm okay. There's nothing, I, I argue with my wife all the time. She like, oh, guess what? My phone could do this. My phone been doing it. Uh, yeah. Hey Siri, bring the car. Okay, oh, Google. Man. What? Same thing. <laughs> hey Siri, book me an appointment at such and such. Oh, what's the name is gonna be there too? I spoke with his hollow. Oh, for real? All right. Well, let him know if he want to come. I'll be there. All right. Thank you, Siri. I can't sound like Apple gonna be all right, but there's a whole lot of competition that you talking about them taking out. They're going to take out Google, too, now? <laughs> I'm just having fun, y'all. That's all. I'm just having fun. If you know me, you know I despise the fruit company. But I'm going to leave that where it's at. That's why I'm glad this is recorded. <laughs> <laughs> all right, y'all. Another great episode. Thank you, everybody. You know, thank you for the insights. Great discussion. Great discussion. Appreciate everybody. We'll be back Monday. Uh, everybody have a great weekend. Keep studying. Keep doing your research. Uh, appreciate everybody for tapping in and uh, you know adding your insight. Still sharp and still. All right. Peace, Peace of the abundance. Brother. Peace of the abundance. Don't get caught in the trap. Peace of the abundance.